Oh, hi everyone, I'm actually live. Amazing. So I'm gonna wait for you guys to get in here so we can start. Hi, how are you? Amara, hi Amara, hi, hi my Twinkle Dean. Hi guys, so we're here to talk about how to build a sustainable customer base. Our guest today is Ferami Ajetombe. I have notes here, so I'm looking through them. So I give you all the right information. So um, I'm gonna give you his bio once he comes on um but he is at cowrie wise he is the head of the brand engagement team at cowrie wise so he'll be talking to us about building a sustainable customer base welcome hi how are you thank you so much for joining us so i think he should be here let me just check that he's here i'll add him on to this live and then we can start and we can talk about how you can advance your business this period by building a sustainable customer base. So let us see if he is here. He is not here. Okay, yes, he's here. So he's going to come on in a minute. I've invited him on and then we're going to start talking about how we can build a sustainable Hi. customer base. Hi, Rami, how are you? How are you doing? Your hair is nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. How are you doing today? Uh, where will I? You can say I'm at home. So <laughs> I'm at home as well, but I have these like very strong lights. So your house is very look... fine. I like the wooden <laughs> background at the back of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us here today on Smartpreneur. Okay. I know that there's a lot of people on here who are very excited to learn from your wealth of knowledge about building a sustainable customer base yeah, so, okay. but so, yeah, glad to be here, actually. thank you so i'm going to go through your bio so people know you know the width of the person they have in front of them today so you are our guest is Ferramo ajatombi you're a brand engagement strategist um you graduated from the department of economics university of lagos am i doing well so far yeah university of lagos so correct Yes. As an engagement strategist, you're heavily focused on helping brands with content marketing to drive behavioral change and deploying engagements to retain customers. And currently, you lead the engagement team, the brand engagement team at Cowrie Wise, which is a saving and investments firm. Yeah, that's correct. I got it? Yes, you do. Awesome. But you didn't pronounce my name correctly. My name is Farami. Oh, sorry. It's, no it's, it's Farami. Fair. Wrong me. Fair wrong me. Sorry. Yeah, I no just problem. anglicized it. Sorry. Fair wrong it's me. It's fine. Forgive it's me. Fine. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so let's get straight into it. I know that, you know, we have about 45 minutes. So I want to, um, I just want to get into it straight away. First, talk to me about Carry Wise, you know, what you do at Carry Wise and through the work that you do there, how SMEs and other brands can actually learn how to build a sustainable customer base. Okay, so what I do at CarryWise is quite simple. I help the I can you have I help the brand yes. build um, long last to the with the customer. So different audiences say we're looking at mothers. How do you build relationship with mothers, and how do they like how do they like uh, <clears throat> how do they like uh, connect better with the brand with respect to their goals. That, that's what I do at um, CarryWise. That's what I do at CarryWise. Okay. Um, for what for what businesses can learn from Carry? There's a lot actually. There's a lot actually. So um, I saw somebody calling me, or quite from Carry Wise. I'm not. I'm not quite from Carry Wise, please. <laughs> so by the way, quite from Carry Wise is a community figure that we built for Carry Wise, so that people, so that there is a community figure in Carry Wise that people relate with, and kind of build a personal connection with them. So one thing, first thing that I think okay. I learned Carry Wise is. How do you grow your brand in such a way that you build the community without spending so much on ads? Of course, ads are very good, but in as much as you want to spend money on ads, you cannot win the game with cash. You have to learn how to build a community around your product. So yes, one thing business can learn from Carrie is how do you build a community around your product? Yes, I love that you said that because I feel like, you know, with the sort of um, emphasis on digital nowadays, a lot of people are spending a lot of money on ads and in terms of connecting with the customer and community building, when they're not necessarily seeing that conversion. They may be making sales, but in terms of you know um, keeping the attention of their 
um, target customers and customer base, ads don't necessarily translate to that. So as you said, if ads are not really the most um, efficient or effective way of doing that, what, what is a more effective way of doing that? Okay, so I just want to get it, I want people to get it um, clearly. First, the truth is ads are not a bad way to actually grow your market. Of course, everybody needs adverts. You need to run adverts and everything. But people do not trust ads. People trust people. They trust If you see your friend using, like when Uber came like Nigeria, most people would have trusted, okay, that my friend is using an Uber car. And okay, let me walk. Let me take it because my friend uses So the first thing to do is to find a minimum viable audience. Okay, let's say 10 people that trust your brand. What is the worldview built around these 10 people? How can you serve that worldview? The good thing about worldview is that there are more people that agree with somebody's worldview. There are a lot of people that agree with your worldview. There are a lot of people that agree with my worldview. So if you build something around that worldview, gradually, they would invite people that share the same worldview with them into the mm -hmm. brand, into to try out the brand, and gradually the business begins, begins to grow. So, um, so clearly, sorry, sorry. So clearly what matters, first of all, is understanding the worldview of your minimum viable audience. Minimum viable audience simply means that what particular, what amount of people would you need to keep your product alive for a certain period? Is it 20? Is it 200 people? Is it mm -hmm. uh, 300 people? So what, what particular world? Let me give you a, a very simple instance now. There's some people that share the worldview that I need to be able to lock my money up to be able to save. Some people tell you that, okay, I don't, I don't need to lock my money up. I just need to have my money somewhere that I can save them. Carry wise yeah. is not built for such people. It is built for people who are seeking discipline to lock up their money. So you find those kind of people, leverage on selling content to them, teaching them about how to like be disciplined with their finances, be, be teaching them how to grow their money that way. Mm -hmm. Then gradually they find friends that have that same desires with them and they bring their friends to try out carry wise and begin to grow. Mm -hmm. Of course, we'll run ads, but imagine running ads with the testimonials of people who have already used the products. And their friends begin to see those apps. That's how. That's the best way to go about it, actually. Okay. Okay. I like that. So I love what you said, and someone even repeated it: that people trust people, not ads. And you know, trying to spread the message of your brand by getting maybe influencers or friends and family to really sort of, mm -hmm. I guess, vouch for your brand and build mm -hmm. trust in your brand. Yeah. But I feel like there's a lot of entrepreneurs. You know, entrepreneurs are so busy. You're doing your business accounting. You're doing, you know, manning your staff. There's so many things. Do you, what are the easy ways that um, SMEs can implement these things? Because not, not, not every time ads, ads are quite expensive. So what um, organic ways can we build a sustainable customer base? You know, ways that aren't very expensive, that are quite easy to implement and that will get us those guaranteed results. Okay, so the easiest way is nudging other people to refer your product. Let, let, I'll give, I like to use examples. So a simple example might be, okay. I make food. Let's say I make cakes and I have five customers. Mm -hmm. The first time my cakes get to that customer and I just have five customers, nothing stops me from writing handwritten letters to those customers to say, thank you. I really, I'm really grateful for what you did for, make, for making the purchase of this cake. How about you just, a very short copy, how about you take a picture of this, share with your friends or I can nudge them to say, the cake was probably delivered at a fee. Send this card to a friend who wants to purchase cake next time and they would actually get free delivery. So it's leveraging on your existing small base to mm -hmm. actually drive publicity for yourself. So that's the best way, actually. First of all, friends, okay. no matter how small they might be, two customers, three customers, four, five customers, leverage on them, use them to actually drive referrals for your business. That's the cheapest way to actually go about it. Of course, even okay. that can be expensive, but start with that small audience, let it scale, build that emotional connection with them and have them drive referrals for you. Okay, fantastic. I love that. I love the fact that you're talking about, you know, using your existing customers to grow because I feel like return customers are the lifeblood of every business. So once you yeah. have that base, you can use that to get even more people. Let's talk about COVID because right now I feel like that is what is on everybody's mind, everybody's lips, we're in the COVID mm -hmm. era. Well, we're going to come out of it very soon, but right now, this is where we are. So what can businesses do um, right now? Because it seems like there's a lot of confusion, a lot of worry. Um, and, you know, there's a notion that maybe people aren't really spending as much um, because of what's going on. People are being more careful and things like that. So what can SMEs do during this period 
to you know still to make sales to boost engagement with their customers and to continue building that sustainable customer base even despite what's going on at the moment with covid so i will take it from a very um, simple perspective in the sense that i would not lie to anybody i've seen a lot of people come around to say oh 10 ways to survive covid 19 but Honestly, nobody has been through a, through a pandemic before. At least if you're not to 110 years old, you've never been through a pandemic. So I cannot say that I have a perfect answer for it. There is no perfect answer to this. What I can actually say is just little things that I've noticed around and how to implement them. To have survived something like COVID at the moment, the truth is that it could not have started right now with COVID. A number of businesses that are actually surviving at the moment have something that they call concentration spread. So if, for instance, you make, uh, um, you make bags and all your customers were coming from people who probably work in the banks, it is clear that right now COVID would have affected you because a lot of those people will not probably be working and probably not earning as much as they used to earn before. So what I would advise mm -hmm. post-COVID, pre-COVID, COVID is first of all, learn how to segment your audience such that if one audience is affected by A, you probably pick up another, you probably make money from another audience. So let's say you have 100 customers. Your 100 mm -hmm. customers, can you hear me? Your 100 yes, customers should be spread across like five tiers, five okay. tiers of different risk arrangements. So if possible, let's say your customers in the first tier are not bringing as much as you want, your customers from maybe the third tier will be the ones bringing the money that you want. So spread well, spreading your concentration risk across different segments of your audience. That is very, very important. But of course, that would have okay. happened before covid now in the covid in the covid um in the covid in the covid era mm -hmm. what i advise small businesses to do is not just jump on oh let's do delivery let's do xyz let's do this let's do that it's to, first of all look at the like i mentioned again go back to the audience concentration risk sorry concentration spread and concentration risk somebody's asking for that so it's look mm -hmm. at your audience first of all right now your existing audience right now Engage with them. There are social media platforms. There are various ways to engage with them. Build in-house engagement plans with them. Not with the aspect okay. of selling, but mm -hmm. with the idea of learning what needs that they have that you can satisfy in this period. What most companies okay. have done is to actually interact with customers this period. All those funny challenges that you're seeing around, some of them are just basically a means of understanding what companies could actually do. For, for example, if you run, say... A yogurt brand, mm -hmm. a very well developed yogurt brand, and you run a challenge like Home Chef Challenge to find out what your customers can make with yogurt at home. Of course, most of them have probably not bought yogurt before, but because we started that challenge, it's not easier yeah. for you to now talk about supplying them yogurt because of that challenge you've run with them. So, interacting mm -hmm. with the audience right now to understand what they're doing through various challenges, through um, in house. Um, options that you can have with them. That's the first way to find out what they need and find out how you can actually reach them with whatever product or services to offer. Okay, I love that. But I want to also talk about the practical tools we can use to interact with them. We're on one of them now, Instagram. Obviously, everyone, you know, a lot of SMEs, yeah. we use Instagram. We do polls on our stories, you know, DMs. We answer questions and all the rest of it. But apart from Instagram, what other free tools can... Um, we leverage during this time, you know, even in terms of email marketing, just different ways we can reach out and stay connected to our customers. Okay, so uh, the emails, if you had an, if you had an email um, approach, fine. But to be fair and to be honest, Instagram is still one of the best means for any small business. I mean, we're having Instagram live on Instagram. <laughs> we're we're yeah. not anywhere. <laughs> However, like I mentioned earlier, there are little ways that can be offline interactions just to show care to your customers. Maybe pick up your top 10 customers, send them something. And it might be expensive at this period. Send them something with little... There's something about handwritten letters, I don't know, that just work for customers. Just send them something with handwritten letters and have them talk about you. The most important thing you want to do, whether it is from Instagram, whether it is from Zoom, whether it's from Twitter or anyways, to ensure that whatever action you take, you have the customers talking about you to other customers. Do you get my okay. point? So that mm -hmm. is the most important thing. So it doesn't matter whatever platform you have. What matters is that you building a viral loop with whatever engagement you are putting forward at the moment. That's what mm. 
Mm, okay, very interesting. And, you know, in terms of Zoom, a lot of people this period are using Zoom to do, you know, uh, meetings, conferences, webinars, things like that. Is Zoom also a tool you think we can um, all leverage to build more, you know, a, yes, a more so, sustainable customer base? Yes, I have, I have a friend on Twitter. His name is um, El, El Divini. He runs a product called Rise Vest. What he did... Okay, I've heard of that, hosted, yes. Yeah, he hosted a Zoom party. So you party. register ahead. Yeah, a Zoom party where everyone just turns on with their screen, their songs playing. Instead of using the Instagram like where everybody can 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 view, yeah. it was like a secluded party where everybody just joined and they actually had a party, had drinks in their own houses. So for instance, if I was a small talk person, probably partner with say drinks or NG, I say, Hey guys, mm -hmm. maybe my customers are actually bought small talks over the last three weeks. I say, Hey guys, let's have a Zoom party over the weekend. Or for you to actually mm -hmm. be part of this Zoom party, you would order, say, a platter of small chops, and I would deliver a free drink along with it for you, and you get a passcode to join the Zoom party. So those are the little things that you can play around to actually. Those are the little things you can play around to actually build um, and give. There are many ways to go around things like this. So that's just one. Okay. Point. I like that. I like the idea of a party. That sounds fun. Like if someone invited me to a Zoom party, I would definitely go. Yeah, so especially with this private. It's not everybody that will be able to see it on Instagram. Like yeah. everybody, it's just going to be a private space. Private space. Yeah, yeah. I like that. And you know, I want to talk about. Um, I'm sorry, I've lost my train of thought now. Yes, I want to talk about challenges. What challenges do you think people may have in building a sustainable um, customer base? Because for me, it's not only just about accumulating the data. It's also about having an organized system. You know, I love what you were saying about connecting with your customers, sending a handwritten note and all the rest of it. But, you know, to do all of those things, you have to have pretty solid um, data that is, you know, in an Excel sheet or something like that. So you can say, for example, we have 100 customers, maybe 20 on the island, 20 on the mainland, 30 in Abuja, to know how to go about, you know, um, creating that connection. So I want to talk about more of the organizational side of it. What tools do you think um, SMEs can use? I know there's Google Sheets, there's Excel, there's some other things on the market as well. What would you recommend uh, people use to sort of organize their information so when they are trying to reach out, they have it all in one place, you know, organized? Okay, so if I get the clue, you're saying, what are the easiest ways for, for small businesses to gather data and just like yes. leverage it? So if you work with, if for instance, you use Instagram and anything like that, and you're not using any other online platform, let's say you just run your business, let's say you run your business on Instagram alone, can you, get, can you hear me? Yes, what perfectly. To, what you would need to do, for, if you're not doing anything, you can use things like Typeform to get feedback from your... Because Typeform is free for 100 responses per month to get feedback. Okay. And that's like sort of data that you can export mm -hmm. to Google Sheets and leverage upon. You can always use Typeform to interact with your customers. However, if you're using a, an online platform like WooCommerce, like Shopify, there's a lot of data that comes from there that you can feed to an emailing system okay. um, seamlessly and use that to speak to your customers. But like as I mentioned, okay. I'm assuming that a lot of people are not using this kind of platform, just using Instagram. Try as much as possible to always ask your customers for feedback using Typeform and leverage on that data that they share with you to build your campaign. Okay. Okay, interesting. I didn't, I, I've heard of Typeform, but I never knew what it did. I didn't understand how it worked. So now that you mentioned it, I'm definitely going to go and check it out and find Actually, out. It's very, it's, so it's better than Google Forms in the sense that it's more interactive. It's more, it can be so much fun when people are, because people get bored when they're filling forms or anything. But yeah. with Typeform, it's easier for you to get people to join and fill up any feedback form. Okay. Okay. I love that. I love that. Thank you. Fantastic. We're learning so much. I hope you guys are saving your questions because very soon we're going to come to you and we're going to ask you, you know, about any questions that you have. But for now, enjoy the chat so let's talk about outsourcing because you know with a big company like carrywise you are the brand um, lead in terms of you know in customer engagement um but with smes you know usually very small companies maybe a company of maybe one to five people so um do you think that in terms of customer engagement that needs to be outsourced to maybe someone needs to be brought in specifically for that or do you think, yeah, please, thank you so much for your question. Um, hold your question. We'll soon come to it. And um, do you think that um, SMEs need to actually outsource this aspect? Because it's so important 
to maybe a freelancer or someone that can do it for them? Or do you think it's easy to actually just integrate into your business no matter the size or scale of your business? Okay, about outsourcing your customer support and brand engagement, it's fine if you're a big company, it's fine if you can afford it. But no matter, no matter what, you have to understand how your customers behave yourself internally. Mm-hmm. When Carrywise started, we were just, um, if I'm correct, we were just four people and we didn't outsource anything. We didn't outsource okay. design, we did not outsource uh, customer engagement, we didn't outsource research. Okay. Of course, we knew that we needed research, we knew that we needed data, but we tried to understand everything internally first. So even when you're outsourcing it, it's easier for you to know exactly what is happening with your customers. It's easier for you to know what the consultant is doing with your customers and you can actually leverage on that better. If you do not have a clear understanding... Uh Oh, you're frozen. Okay. Hello? Sorry. So no matter how much you outsource, you're not going to do a great job. Okay, you're back. So you froze for a minute, but you're back. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So I said... No matter how much you outsource, mm, okay. if you do not understand Sorry, your business, mm-hmm. if you do not understand your business properly internally, there's not so much you can do with your customers. So you want to outsource, fine, but try as much as possible to get enough data internally about your own. Oh, you're frozen. Yeah, you're back there. You're back. Mm-hmm. Hello? Hello, you're yes, back. Okay. We can see you now. So, I think it's like, Carrywise has Carrywise has hundreds of thousands of customers. And mm-hmm. right up to now we're not still a very large team and we still handle everything internally. Of course maybe a time where we would want to outsource, but we have a very clear understanding of how our customers operate. And now we can leverage that and outsource even though we want to contact that to anybody. Okay, interesting. So how big is the CarryWise team now? How many are we in CarryWise team now? Yeah. Oh, we're just um, 17. Oh, that's quite big. From 4 to 17, so you've definitely grown. Yeah, we grew, but so- we grew mostly in uh, late 2019, not even early 2019. So okay. we were still about like seven till about late 2019, seven, eight. Okay. Okay. Today. Okay. Interesting. And I want to talk about that growth a little bit because I know we're talking about building a customer base, but I also think that a lot of the entrepreneurs on here would be interested in knowing, you know, in terms of, you know, business growth and getting your business sort of in front of your target customer. And again, organically, what would you say are the top three best ways to do that organically because I, I mean again I, I know you talk about ads being good and I think ads are good but I just think that it can become expensive to run ads constantly so people I know a lot of SMEs will do ads but then obviously take a break so in that taking a break period what can we still do to push our brand message out there so I don't have three but I have two I have okay. two um Number one is content marketing. Number two is referrals. So content marketing can come in two ways. There's a lot of data. There's a lot of data that comes your way as a company. For instance, if you run a shoe company and you find out that more women from Lekki are buying black shoes, you might want to just run a blog post and you say, did you know that why do women in Lekki buy black shoes? It's a very funny blog post. I mean, it's not something anybody would care about, but you will just, because of the way it's written, because of the way the headline is written, you cannot get that content. Here's the reason why women in Lekki buy black shoes in particular. Or here's the reason why mm-hmm. men in Lagos buy red shoes. You get that kind of, mm-hmm. so writing about your company's data and sharing that kind of content around is a good way to get in the, in the face of many people. Then mm-hmm. also, understanding the kind of information your customers are seeking for, providing data and content on that information is another way to get in front of you because that's the easiest way to even get your content shared. Number, uh, so then you can now go to the part of referrals, which I've talked about extensively in the past. So preferably content marketing and referrals before you now start to build ads. If you want, in fact, I always advise you that first of all, build an audience before you start to run ads. 
imagine you running an ad and people are just like, oh, this is calm. Where are you guys? And, then, and nobody's there to defend you. When you run an ad and there's an existing community, somebody can call and say, oh, I know these guys. I've ordered from them before and I've done XYZ. So it's better to build your audience first through those two, um, two parts, content marketing and referrals, before you now go on to learn these ads. Mm. And I, I totally agree with you because I know that so I'm, I have a business. I'm always on Instagram. Uh, for my personal brand as well. And I know that sometimes when I see ads, like the other day I saw something advertised, I think it was accessories or maybe earrings or something. So I saw the ad in my stories and I now clicked on the ad. And when I clicked on it and I went to the person's page, the person only had like two posts or three posts. And I thought, I'm not going to buy from this person. Not because I did like, I like the advert. I like what they were advertising, but because they didn't have a lot of content on their page, I wasn't um, confident or comfortable to buy from them. So I love what you're saying about building up your content. Um, are you still there? Sorry, okay. I lost you. People are calling my phone. That was like, sorry. I can't hear I have you. some calls coming. Okay, it's okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I know. Oh, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so I was saying I love what you're saying about building up your um, content yeah, and community yeah. first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much. So now it's time for questions. So if anybody oh, has um, any before before um you go on there was something i wanted to really um mention i wanted to really explain that concentration risk in in very little in like very little ways i don't know if okay. you remember tom's the shoes tom's shoes yes yes they used to give a, a portion of their um price to charity portion of their price yeah, to so charity when you, when you buy one shoe they give another shoe to a child somewhere and everything yeah. and somehow Tom did not scale. Do you know? Mm. Like, I didn't know I that. I remember when last we heard about Tom's. Like when last you see anybody wearing Tom's and everything like that. And you see, that's the, that's the danger of um, having a hero product or having um, a, a, an overt focus on a particular product. That's something that affected Tom's. You get So Tom's mm -hmm. had just shoes, but they realized very late that they needed to do things like Oh, school bags, um, eyeglasses, and everything. So it was hard for people to move away from just the shoes, and people even got tired of the shoes. Such that right now, even um, there was a, there was a, there was a video yesterday by Business Insider on Tom's and how the business failed. You get because there was a oh, really? very heavy focus on building just the shoes, and that affected them in every way possible. It affected them so seriously. So that is the very bad part about um, about. Um, concentration risk like i mentioned so there are two ways it can happen it can be maybe your audience is too concentrated in one part so maybe for instance <clears throat> you are running imagine you're running carry wise for instance and you're in t you have like 100,000 users or you have like 400,000 users and all your money everything that is in your in carry wise comes is coming from just maybe 1,000 users so that means if mm. something goes wrong with those 1,000 users your business is going to have a problem do you understand mm -hmm. but if, like, let's say your entire um, investment coming from people spread across, let's say, 200,000 users or 250,000 users from 400,000 users. You have a well spread risk, and there's a, there's a lower possibility of your business crashing if anything happens. It's the yeah. same thing in business, also. You have to learn how to spread your audience, and you have, that, you have to learn how to like spread your product. Your entire business should not be built around one product, it should be spread across different revenue sources. Do you get my point? So that is very important. I get your point. Mm, I get your point. But You're I want to talk about this. Bad. Go ahead. Okay, sorry, sorry. Go let's ahead. Take question. Let's take a question, please. No, I, no, I wanted to ask you about this concentration risk. I understand that, you know, like what you said, you're, you should have a product range, right? So maybe you yeah. get 40% of your gross income from one and 20% yeah. you know, from another, that sort of thing. But I yeah. want to understand it more in terms of your audience. You said don't, don't just focus on a specific audience. Because a lot of people, they have a niche product, right? So they focus specifically on their niche and that's, what makes them unique and that's also what gives them the bulk of their revenue so in the case of you know someone that has a niche product maybe like for example baby food they just do a specific type of baby food and that's really popular how would that sort of person spread their concentration risk i just want to understand it in a different context okay so it's fine for that kind of business yes you want to spread your your, your concentration risk in that aspect we will not necessarily be getting new products. Of course, if you want to get new products, can maybe baby products, but it will not be basically getting new products. This will be, I have 10,000 users in my customer base. How many of them are actually buying the product? 
Am I, is it just 20 of them? Is it just 100? Is it just 5,000? If you have 10,000, at least 4,000 people in your customer base to be your customers actually buying your product. So in that aspect, to, you, to spread your concentration risk, what you need to do is consistent engagement with the audience in such a way that everybody that joins your customer base, everybody that comes to your page is converting to become a customer. Do you get my point there? So you are spreading your risk across that customer base. So you have 10,000 people in your, maybe your email base or something like that, but it's 4,000. That's a 40% conversion. 4,000 of them are buying your product. That's great. But if it's just like 200 of them out of 10,000, there's a yeah. very serious problem there. There's an issue. Okay, I understand. Thank you for clearing that up. I totally understand. So now it's time for questions. I know everybody has been itching to ask their questions. So this is your time, guys. Ask questions. I have a phone here where we have questions that are going to be sent to me on WhatsApp. So, um, yeah, please do. The floor is open. Ask your questions. Oh, they took light oh, in my house. <laughs> Excuse me, they took light in my house. Ah, I think the inverter came on, though. The inverter saved the day. But you have the beam in front of you, right? The what, sorry? You have, like, some lights in front of you. Yes, yes. The, um, I don't, yes. There's some, you see, it's a bit darker. My main light is off, but the inverter is on, so it's fine. All right, guys, so questions. So all of you that have been saying in the comments, I have a question. Oh, no, actually, sorry. I think some questions have already been asked. Have they come? No, no questions. We're waiting on your questions, or you guys, please don't fall our hand. Okay, someone asked. Sorry, let me read it. For an IG business, would you recommend to focus on the follow accounts and for the trust <coughs> things she mentioned? Sorry, let me read it. For an IG business, would you recommend to focus on the follow accounts and then for the trust thing she mentioned, or focus on the loyal customers. Okay. Did you get the question? Okay, somebody, someone else asked another question, so I think we don't want to miss it. Someone, okay, so let me go to the second. Can you, okay. Ooh, sorry. Yes, to broaden the scope of this conversation a bit, I'd like our guest's opinion on engaging a largely informal online target group in the B2B marketing space. Okay, I'll take that. So let me take that first one. Okay. Do not focus. Do not focus on follower accounts, as a business okay. you're growing. I've seen businesses that have twenty thousand followers and they post something and they're getting twenty two likes, ten likes, eleven likes. If mm. I come on your page and I see that, honestly, I would think maybe you're buying the likes or you're, you just you or you bought your followers and you don't necessarily have an audience. Do you get? Mm -hmm. So it's important mm -hmm. that even if you have two thousand people, if you have two thousand people. It is important that out of those 2,000 people, if 50 of them are liking your post, it is perfectly fine. What people want to see when they get to your page, as an, on Instagram page, is to see the conversations that are happening on your page. They want to see the mm -hmm. quality of the conversation. They want to see how people are talking about your business, how people interact with your business, and all like that. So, um, mm -hmm. I'll give you a simple example. There's a guy called Salem Kingin um, on Instagram. Called what? Salem Kingin. Salem Kingin. Okay. Salem Kingin on Instagram. When he started, he had just 2,000 followers, but his posts were getting 800 likes from 2,000 followers. And he, convert, he would have over like 200, wow. 300 comments on that page. It was wow. clear that this guy had a community. And I wanted to hire him. I wanted to partner with him then as an influencer for Kauri West. It was clear that he had an audience. You get my point now. So mm -hmm. what customers look for is just social proof. Social proof is not in the number of followers. It's the number of conversations that I heard about your brand. So try as much as possible, particularly when you post on Instagram, to ask questions in your post so that people can reply your post. You can go, hi guys, to, to let, just ask them, just keep on asking questions in your post. When you ask questions in your mm -hmm. post, you get replies and ensure you reply people's comments. Once there's a conversation thread on every of your posts, it's easier for people to trust your brand. <clears throat> okay, 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 fantastic. So yeah, I like that because I think people do get um, caught up on followers and the number of followers and it becomes like this you know huge thing but i love what you said because i i agree with you engagement is a lot more important and sometimes people have followers and they don't actually they're not even connected with the brand they're not really that interested exactly. maybe they're following maybe they saw a meme or something and they followed for that reason not you know not what the brand is actually doing so i love your response so the second question is about um connecting with customers offline um, and specifically in the uh, B2B marketing space. Yes, what advice could you give about that? Okay. Um, for the B2B marketing space, to be honest, I've not played there extensively, but with my little experience, one thing that I have known with B2B marketing space is, first of all, 
identifying who the linchpins, who are the key people you are trying to serve in that space. So, for instance, if you run a marketing product, which is B2B, and you want to target carry wise, you cannot just walk to carry and say, hey, guys, I have a marketing product for you guys. What should happen is that you look for who is the head of marketing, or who is the easiest person that you know that is in the marketing space there, in carrywise, in all other firms that you're trying to target, probably like 20 of them. And mm -hmm. do not go and meet them on LinkedIn and say, oh, uh, I, I will have a product I want to try. No. Look at them and look at the challenge that they have. Look for someone who can actually speak to that challenge that you have a solution for. And organize mini events, mini private events that they can come, have conversations around the challenge. They have the person speak to them about that challenge. Then you can now upsell the product. So first of all, you first of all understand who the, who the target um, companies are, who the target people in those companies are, what their challenges are, how your solutions fit into those challenges. Get the person that speaks, who is an influencer in that field that speaks to that challenge. Partner with the person, preferably host an offline private event where you can bring these people together because of that influencer. So it would be the influencer inviting those people. So for instance, if mm -hmm. you were to talk about um, music marketing for Alaba Boys now, you can bring it, if you had the money for instance, you can bring a Don Jazzy. And Martin Don Jazzy inviting the marketers in those places that, hey guys, let's have a round table talk about this certain issues. It's easier for Don Jazzy to bring those people than you saying your company should bring them. But because you brought in an influencer and you found out the challenge that they have and you have a solution for it, it's easier for you to have the conversation that they now upsell the solution through the influencer that you brought into that space. So yeah, that's a good way you can go about it. But it's not like it's perfect. There are many other ways. I can discuss, but not this time will not allow me to discuss everything. Mm, that's interesting. So I want to ask a question about that. So why do you think it's better coming, um, the invite is better coming from an influencer than it is from, you know, say perhaps the head of marketing of that company or, you know, the brand itself? What is the, um, so what is the upside of having the influencer as an anchor? Okay, so to be, to be fair, Nobody cares about your business. Nobody cares about my business. Nobody cares about anything. They care, first of all, about how does this business solve my problem? No, no, I'm looking for a solution. How do I get a solution? Secondly, who has used this solution? So when you bring up somebody who is an influencer in that space, saying this solution will work, it's just the same way as in influencer marketing. People trust people that have built their grounds in certain areas. For for example, let me give you a very uh, let me give you another example. Uh, do you know Chef Franks? Yeah, Chef Franks. Yes, the, the well known chef. So, if for instance, Chef Franks says, "Hi guys, I realize that a lot of the seasoning cubes you use don't give you the particular taste you have. Let's have a, a talk around it." You have a talk around it. He doesn't even talk about the entire seasoning cube that he wants to put, but he's talking about why do seasoning cubes don't work and everything like that. It's easier for Chef Frex to recommend a seasoning cube than the seasoning cube company waking up to just say, oh, guys, our seasoning cube is the best. You get So mm -hmm. it's yeah. always better to come from an influencer in that perspective. Someone is asking okay. how do you do that? Yes. <coughs> Sorry. Someone is asking how do you build an audience? Can I answer that? How do you, yes, yes, how do you build, yes, that's the exact same question I have, yes. We can okay, go to that so question. How do you build an audience? There are, there are different ways, but obviously you're not looking to spend so much of money, given that you're a small business owner, it is very um, important like that. So if you want to build an audience, start first from the people that you know in-house. That's very important. This is your online, start from that you know in-house. Let them try your product or let them put out ads about your product and things like that. But more importantly, you have to start by dishing out relevant content. So you have your friends, you have people, family members, but all your family members share. They have to share something that is very relevant. So like I mentioned, if you had followed us earlier about how to write relevant content, things that your, your audience... So if you sell shoes, there are a lot of things built around shoes that you can write. For instance... In as much as people tell you, the, even as much as a popular thing that, oh, throw tea bags into your shoes so that your shoes don't smell, is a popular thing. Really? I've never heard that. Let's assume it's a popular thing. Okay, so little hacks like that can be the first way you want to be there. Okay, like shoe care hacks. Before you actually even launch your shoe business, okay, you start with shoe mm. care hacks. With those mm. shoe care hacks, your friends are sharing it around. 
people are coming to your page to look for shoe care hats. Now, if people can come to your page and trust you with shoe care hats, it's easier for you to launch a shoe brand and say, okay, guys, I visit you guys have to take care of your shoes for about four weeks, three weeks. I'm launching a shoe brand. To people trust mm -hmm. people that have shown care about the problems that they have and then now go on to now build business around that. So build, uh, build a community around a certain amount of content, then gain the trust and build a product around that trust. <clears throat> Mm, I love what you said, you know, because I, I follow a lot of entrepreneurs um, and there's this Australian entrepreneur. I'm not sure if you've heard of her. Her name is Greta Van Ria, but she's built several multi-million dollar businesses. And this is exactly what she advises, like to down to the letter that you should build a community, build a page, build interest. Don't even talk about products until you get you know, to a certain level with your community. And then when you do launch your product, there is that trust there. And people will, yeah. you know, buy into it. So I love what you said. Very, very, very informative. Um, do we have any questions at this time? Any other questions? Someone said preach. Preach. All your fans are in the um, comment section right now. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Um, okay, that's the second question. Okay, we've answered the one about building um, an audience and a community. Even after relevant... Okay, so even after relevant with customer base, but no corresponding um, conversion, how do you improve? I think that's a very... I think that's a great question because oftentimes, you know, okay, so you want is, people to pay for your product. Is, yeah, so... Um, you learn consistently. There are always lessons in campaigns and everything. So you started probably with part A. You started with um, a particular content style and everything. What you can now do is that, okay, I've been using this style of content. Mm -hmm. Let me try another style of that content. Run it. You run maybe style A from Monday to Tuesday. Run style B from Wednesday to Thursday. You cannot begin to compare which content style converts better. The truth is that, yes, sometimes yeah. you would detail the particular kind of content and it would not get the corresponding um, response. However, look at other pages also that are doing well. Focus on what try to see what they're doing, gradually implement what they're doing on your own page and then test alongside with your own content and see. For instance, let me tell you something I did. I noticed that when we used to post content on Kauri Wise at some point, we were not getting people, we're not getting people to actually share the content. People would like the content, but they wouldn't share it. I went mm -hmm. to a page called Chris Do. I followed the Chris Do page. Oh, Salem Kingin is here, by the way. So if you guys are wondering what I talked about then, Salem Kingin is here. And he's a very great guy. You might want to you should not that you should follow when it comes to building your content for your brand. So I was saying, so I went to Chris Du's page, and I noticed that at the end of all his posts, he would put an arrow and tell people to share his content. Okay. So said, okay yeah, let's try this on our page. And when we tried it, I was surprised. People started to share our Instagram posts, and it started to work. So wow. we we now we now took up that strategy, blended it with questions, and our engagement began to improve. So you would consistently test. Now, you would, you would not know what is working if you do not pay attention to it. So, you've been okay. posting somehow for pay attention to the results you're getting from that. If you're posting in, in side B, yeah, Chris, do. Pay attention to what you're getting to that also. So, you have to measure exactly to see what is working so that you can consistently tweak your strategy to grow your business. Okay. 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 So, I mean, I think what you said about testing, sorry, I just have to chime in as well because I'm learning a lot from you as we're going along. Um, I think what you said about testing is fantastic because I feel like sometimes we just want a magic bullet. We want just tell us what to do, we'll do it, we'll get the results, we'll keep it moving. But um, the reality is it doesn't work like that. So I love the fact that you just kept it real. You have to test different um, methods sometimes. To yeah, to know what's really going to give you the payoff that you're looking for. So we have another question. It says, what will be the first point of investment for businesses affected by the pandemic more on the audience or more on the brand itself? More on what? More on the audience or more on the brand itself? So I think what the person yeah. is asking... So, so, so the yes. thing is, it is, it is, um, it is um, very, it's very important for you to... Please, can you take note of the questions that are coming? There are, some, there are two questions now. Okay, okay. Yes. Okay. So it is very important for... You, Oh, sorry, that's my channel talks. Okay. When talking about investing, the most important thing any business should be focused about is distribution. How do I distribute my content well enough for people to make purchases? So when you say more about the brand, more about the audience, it's basically the same thing. 
but more about distribution. What distribution strategies are you investing in to ensure that your product is getting to the face of the customer, your target audience? Do you get my point now? So <laughs> it is very important that pandemic or no pandemic, focus on improving your distribution. So what you need to ask yourself is that are there new ways for me to distribute my content? Are there new ways for me to distribute my product? If I invest in these distribution strategies, how will it go? So you have to, first of all, look for new distribution channels and find how to invest in them. That's the most important thing. Fantastic. Okay, everyone's getting excited now. We have a lot of questions coming, but um, we, only, we can only take the two questions that we already have because IG Live cuts off after one hour. So we have about another 13 minutes to go. So thank you guys so much for your questions. We wish we could take more, but at this time we can only take the two existing questions that have already been asked. You're a rock star. Look at all these questions coming in for you. Clearly, everyone's, you know, really being impacted by everything that you're saying. So let's go to the next question. It's by Mass Reviews. And Mass Reviews is asking, is it advisable to start a ready-to-wear fashion brand knowing fully well you are not good with designs but want to employ designers and tailors? Okay, so to take that, People don't buy whether you are good with this or good. What people buy is the story behind whatever you are starting. Now, Seth Gordon said one thing. There is no... Marketers are liars. I'm sorry, but marketers are liars. What people want is the consistency of your story. So, for instance, you wake up and say, oh, you don't like the way people sweat with their shirts. And you're trying to make, you want to make sweat-free shirts where people wear clothes and they don't sweat. That story will sell. If you build... Once there's a story that you can build on and leverage on it, whether you're hiring designers from China or you're hiring tailors from Ijebu or anywhere, what matters is that story. How strong can that story be? Are you good with the story? Can you leverage in that story? Are you good with your finances? Do you know how to run a business? Go on and do it. As long as you have a story and you're good with your business and you can leverage on it, that's fine. I love that. Thank you so much. Um, next question says, if you build, if you build, have a customer base, is it advisable to segment, target, and position for the customer base instead of just trying to connect with the customer base as a whole so i think that's about segmentation mm -hmm. yes yeah, segmentation is the most important thing in your in your customer base of course there's going to be very general connection you have an overall brand tone that connects with the entire audience but you need to segment if you don't segment you will not first of all first of all you will not know your profitable segment and you will not know your you will not know your most profitable segment and you don't know your least profitable segment when you can understand mm -hmm. your most profitable and least profitable segment it is easier for you to build strategies that can grow your business faster so yeah it's important for you to always segment your audience if you're not segmenting your audience you're joking with your business mm, interesting if you're not segmenting i think we should put that on a t-shirt if you're not segmenting your audience you are joking all in capitals with your business I love it. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you to everybody who's asked questions, who's come online, who's joined us this evening. We really, really appreciate you. Um, this is going to be the first of many Instagram lives that we're going to be doing. I'm just making sure I won't miss any important questions before we let you go, because we have about eight minutes to go. Uh, no, we haven't, we haven't missed anything. We answered everything that we've had down and from our audience. So, Faramee, am I saying your name right? If I'm saying it wrong, please check. Yes, you're pronouncing it right. You're pronouncing it right. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you Thank so you. much for coming on. Um, where can people reach out to you if they have any more questions or if they just want to um, talk to you one-on-one? -on -one? Okay, so I'll just, I'll just um, type my handle now. Okay. Please do. This is my Twitter handle. I am more reachable. Sorry. I'm more reachable on Twitter. I made a Twitter. Twitter that handle. So I'm more reachable on Twitter. Okay. Um, so you can reach out to me for anything on content marketing, finance, particularly calorie-wise. And so if you have any questions about how to grow your business, um, the financial aspect of it, I'm ready to answer. Um, if you have questions about content marketing, I'm ready to answer. However, the questions I do not answer if I don't collect money. So <laughs> I, I just, so yeah, because actually I consult. So if you want to reach me on certain questions, I would have to, Pay. Not because it's fun, because I work with that. I work with um, another agency that requires that I charge for certain things. So yes, but okay. basic question. Follow me on Twitter. I drop a lot of content resource almost every day on Twitter for people to follow. On Twitter, yes. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Have you? Have, sorry, I'm a bit behind. Have you dropped your handle? Yeah, I dropped my handle. A underscore fair on me. Should I drop I it again? It. Yeah. Don't worry. It's okay. We'll just we'll we'll add it. We'll add it later. Um, okay. Yeah. 
Okay, I've seen it. A underscore, yeah, I've seen it. Okay, fantastic. Wait, let me just take a quick, I want to do a screenshot before we go. Can you come closer up so we can see you well? Can we see me well? Awesome, awesome, awesome. This has been so much fun. I feel like we need to have you back on again to get more of your insights, but I know everyone's really enjoyed the session. I've personally taken away a lot, you know, that I can use and implement in my own business. Um, There's one last you... thing again. Sorry. My... Go ahead. What is your Twitter handle? Okay, someone's asking again. I just dropped the A on the school for me. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen it? say that please do you know follow us at smartpreneur you can follow us on our website it's www.smartpreneurng.com um, you can also follow us here on instagram smartpreneurng on twitter smartpreneurng and catch us um, on tvc on saturdays from 5 45 to 6 p.m please stay tuned we have a lot of great content planned for everybody you know in the sme space from fun from how to raise funds to more resources to surviving this whole COVID-19 pandemic and a whole lot more. So please do stay glued to Smartpreneur NG. All right, guys, thank you very much. We have to go before Instagram thank you so much. cuts yourself. Fermi, thank you so much for joining us. And no I'm sure everybody here will be heading over to your Twitter to get some of that. You head up your page first and follow your page. <laughs> oh, thank you. My yeah. page is Talula yeah. Glossy. Um, mm -hmm. Let me try and type it before, because I feel like this thing is going to cut us off. Let me try. This is my personal page, Talula Glossy. Okay, that's me. So please do follow me. I would love to chat more with you guys about everything SME related. So All right, thank you. Bye. Bye.